Okay, so a couple weeks ago, I made a little short film about waiting, about being patient when submitting to film festivals. And I did this with kind of a little metaphor while making pizza dough and how long it takes to make proper pizza dough without needing it yourself. It's kind of like a 24 hour process. Some people do it quicker, 18 hours, etc. But for this purpose, I did it in 24 hours. And in this video, I'm gonna break down how I made that film, mostly talk about the cinematography and lighting of it. So if you haven't watched that film, probably go watch that now and then you can come back to this so that way nothing is spoiled and you can kind of see what is going on. But without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into it. So I don't know if I'm gonna break down every shot, but I'm gonna do my best to kind of breeze through it and so you can still see my approach to most of this process. And I think the first thing we should probably talk about is what camera I shot on. So as usual, I'm shooting on my red Komodo, the OG Komodo. Now that the Komodo X is out, we have to always specify. I shot this with one lens, the Sigma 40 millimeter art lens. Now the reason I did that was because I really like this focal length. I've said that on the channel before, 40 millimeters is a fun focal length. And what I did was I shot with the Speed Booster for probably 75% of it, and then I shot without the speed booster if I wanted to get a little bit tighter and basically make that 40 millimeter focal length punch in a little bit on that super 35 millimeter sensor. But a good majority of the film was done with the speed booster. Something else that I did a little differently with this short film is that I shot at a lot of varying apertures. So, you know, I tend to shoot wide open a lot when I'm shooting on a super 35 millimeter camera, just to get that nice separation from the background. But for this, I wanted to really test out different apertures. So I actually see here on this opening shot, um, it's semi cloudy outside and the camera is somewhat far away. So already most of the image is gonna be in focus, but I think I did shoot a lot of these outdoor shots at f4 or f5.6. I actually believe this shot was at f5.6, which is surprising because I'm still not perfectly in focus, which is kind of funny. But when shooting on a speed booster, you're, I mean, that's really what f4, so, um, and not f5.6 because we're gaining a stop of light. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of light going on here and that's what's gonna happen. And as far as filtration goes, I'm shooting with the Tiffin Black Satin Filter, the 1 8 strength. And I'm using the Nisi Swift system, ND system for all the ND on this, which I am using also an IR cut with that when I'm going above four or five stops of ND. Something that I recommend all red Komodo users do and all really black magic users do as well. Make sure you have that infrared cut on your camera. It's gonna make your image look way nicer. So here I think I'm still in the 40, you know, I'm at about an F2.8 here. Could have even gone maybe F4 or something like that to get even more of my face in focus. But, and for lighting here, you know, this is what you're gonna see kind of a pattern, a consistency over the rest of this film. And I'm shooting all of this by myself. Let me just preface with that. Every single shot in this, except for one shot, I shot by myself, which is, could be a good lesson in solo shooting. And if you're gonna practice filmmaking or cinematography at home, you're probably gonna have to do a lot of it alone unless you can get a friend to come help out for free or whatever. Um, but for me, because I was kind of waiting on the pizza and waiting on the weather to be right, which it did not end up being right eventually, I had to just shoot. I had to do things a little different by shooting by myself. So for this, I didn't actually light this, but what I often do, and definitely with exteriors, but most with most of my shots, is I'd always have negative fill on standby. So for this, I've got my 40 inch black solid floppy that I just always have in my car. I always have it with me just in case I wanna shoot something. What's good about the 40 millimeter is that it'll fit in any car, whereas the standard four by floppy, it usually won't fit in most cars. It's just too wide. So you got to get one of those 40 millimeters. Um, that's like the go-to when it comes to solo filmmaking. So I just propped that up, that that black solid um, on the camera side as usual to get that nice shadow side towards the camera. And you can see I've got really nice shape now on my face and then I'm just, we've got cloudy skies that are giving me my key light and I just kind of exposed for my face here. Did a little title action in DaVinci Resolve, just use a built-in title effect to do this. Same thing going on with this close up here. You know, I just changed the angles a little bit, but I still have that floppy right over camera. I also like to kind of box the flap floppy over a little bit. It's not perfectly natural to do that where you have like a tabletop and you're really just blocking off the sunlight from above you. But what we're trying to do is emulate as if the sun is actually directional, as if the sun is not right above us. But for this, it was semi cloudy skies. So the Sun is everywhere when you think about it like that. It's just diffuse and spread everywhere. So for this, it's like we wanted to make it look like the sun is coming from one direction. Um, and so by putting that kind of, you know, putting the floppy over top of you and the side of you, it gives you shape over the entire area, making it look like the sun has direction. 
And for the spec nerds out there, I'm shooting on the red Komodo, but I'm shooting 6K 17 by nine medium quality. Medium quality on the modern red cameras is kind of the go-to codec or raw compression that you want to shoot at. You can shoot high quality for sure. And a lot of people do that. High quality is gonna give you like the most detail possible out of the camera, but for almost every use case that I can see, I don't really see a reason to do that unless you're shooting like a green screen or some sort of effect where you need as much, um, you know, color depth as possible. Medium quality is gonna give you a lot still and it's gonna save a little bit on your card space because I'm already, and I was burning through these cards a little bit faster than I'm used to when I'm shooting for YouTube because I usually just shoot low quality when I'm doing that. But the low quality really does, you can really tell the difference between low quality and medium quality, which I've discovered recently and I've been trying to shoot much more medium quality, especially for projects that I really you know, care about the quality of the image when I'm doing that. Low quality still looks great, ProRes still looks great, um, but medium quality is now my go-to for a lot of this stuff. And I shot 17 by nine to get the sensor even wider. You know, it's like a DCI sensor. And then when I'm going down to this two, three, five uh, widescreen aspect ratio, it's giving me more um, resolution on the sides. So to add to the approach, what you're gonna see is that I'm often gonna have the negative fill on me. I'm gonna have my floppy next to me in case I need that to block light. And then outside of that, I'm going to have a single four foot Nanlite tube light with me at any given point. So for here, I literally just propped it up on my little like, security system here and I you know took it from the same side as the window to kind of motivate it from the window and that fell off into black as it went the other direction here. So this gives some sort of shape to the image and if I was shooting like a commercial or something maybe I would have spent more time on all of these shots going forward but what I'm doing is just a quick formula every single time throw up either a light or throw up negative fill in order to give some sort of shape and exposure to my image. So you're going to see that kind of consistently throughout this video using autofocus there, a couple of shots I used autofocus, some of them I didn't. The autofocus was helpful when you're shooting solo, obviously. The Red Komodo doesn't have the best autofocus in the world, but if you just kind of mark where you want it, it does do the job, and they do also have this new beta face tracking. But what I found with the face tracking is if you look away from it, it gets confused and it has to refind your face when you look back, whereas Sony's, you know, is smarter than that. Sony's and Canon, um, but that's okay. I think that they will get better in the future. So for a lot of these close-up shots, I'm actually shooting, I think, at f2.8, because if you're shooting at f1.4 on the 40 millimeter with a speed booster, it's gonna be so shallow, nothing's really gonna be in focus, and I'm trying to, you know, get away from that a little bit. Let's actually see what's going on. Some of these are still a little too shallow, but uh, most of these are shot probably in the 2.8 range. So the point of this was to kind of give some sort of, um, you know, plot device to show me waiting. You know, I could be speed shooting me sitting around doing nothing, but I thought the pizza was a good kind of analogy um, because it's going to have a payoff at the end. The wait was kind of worth it. In contrast with the film festivals, which um, it don't really matter in the end. You know, what, what mattered with making my film flee, my short film flee was that I really just wanted to get that done and experience it. And I'm going to put it out online for everyone else to see now, now that the kind of festival season is starting to slow down on my end for the ones that I put it in. This is all natural light here. What's funny about this shot is I even tried to stop down the lens quite a bit and put the focus on the, uh, the fence there and I missed focus. I actually didn't put it on the right post, but that's okay. I think it's actually kind of funnier this way. Autofocus here, it gets a little wily when I come in. But for this, this is back to that formula. What we're doing here is that there, once again, wasn't much direction with the sun. It was kind of overhead at this point, not quite overhead, but basically. And so what I did here was I took a large five in one reflector. I put it on the ultra bounce, the white ultra bounce side, and I kind of laid it on the ground up against the fence. And I even found a patch of light to make sure that I got enough sun on my face. So I actually cheated this whole thing. I walked away from where I was actually standing. And then I put that floppy on the camera side to give a little bit of shape. This could have a little bit more punch. You know, I wish I could, um, if I could have got that, that bounce even closer to my face, that'd been better. But for the sake of sh solo shooting, this is what we get. Looks fine. The important thing is that my face is visible and the highlights in the background are not blown out. So everything is exposed properly. 
um, doing it this way. And this is something you can do, maybe if you're not solo shooting, but if you're just shooting, you know, with not a big budget, just take one of those five one reflectors, get the biggest one you possibly can get, and bring that ultra bounce around with you when you're outside. So shooting outside is much easier because you already have all the sun, you're just trying to compete with it, but you can use that sun and turn it into your key light if you need to. So here I'm not using the bounce, but I am using the negative fill over the uh, right side of this just to give a little bit of contrast. It's not much, but it's there. And here we're doing a similar situation. I, all I did was throw the tube light in the corner there to kind of act as if there was a lamp and I bounced it off the wall, which gives me a little key light, separates me from the background since I'm wearing black. And I actually did that at 2700 Kelvin in order to give myself a little bit more of a tungsten look, a more orange hue, that way you kind of know that I'm inside. I'm shooting in an interior environment with the lamp rather than using the sunlight. Here, this one was really hard. Uh, I actually held the camera with one hand off to the side while using my mouse on the other hand. And that's why this is the only handheld shot in the whole thing. I thought about stabilizing it, but I kind of liked the anxiety that the handheld shot was adding in the middle of this. Um, and so I just used autofocus and it just did this with the camera while I was operating the mouse on the other side. Much harder than it uh, translates to here. I believe that was 40 millimeters um, without the seed booster, so I get close up. This is actually a stock footage shot from Storyblocks. Uh, I threw a little color on there to kind of make it match to just show the transition in tonight. It was great. I'm not. This is not sponsored by Storyblocks, but that's where these like stock footage sites really come in, is because you can. You just need this shot that you can't really film by yourself or maybe you don't have time to film by yourself and you can just jump on there, find a shot real quick, helps tell the story and you don't have to be the one that filmed it. I mean, ideally you would be, I think that's even an HD clip whereas the rest of this was shot in 6K, um, but it totally translates. So this was a kind of fun one. I shot this in the middle of the day, but I wanted it to look kind of like, you know, moonlight-ish. Um, and so I took the uh, color temperature on the camera and I shifted it way blue. And then I put a tube light outside my hallway there and I just cracked my curtains a little bit to put in a little sunlight as if there's a little bit of moonlight coming in. So this was all about like creating a mood and directional light um, without over lighting it. And I brought the ISO way down to make sure that the blacks were nice and dark. And I did a digital zoom here because this was kind of a long shot, maybe too long, honestly, in the edit. And I wanted to, you know, keep you interested, keep the audience interested. So with a little camera movement, and since I'm filming by myself, it's not like I'm doing a dolly move or anything like that. So I did a little digital push here to emphasize all that. But once again, just throw up a tube light, just literally set up against a white wall and it bounces around creating a soft light in the background, creating um, a little bit of shape in the scene. This is all mostly natural light. I might've had the tube light in the corner, but I don't think so. I think for this close up of my face, I did have the tube light off on the key side, the far side, bouncing off the wall um, at full power in order to compete with the window behind me. No negative fill inside really though, um, because it was, I was always trying to keep compete with the windows. So I was always often exposing down. I really needed to lift my face rather than taking more off the shadow side. I also had my little Rode video mic on top of the camera the whole time to capture the audio. You know, I wasn't focusing as much on audio because I knew I could do it in post if I needed to. I could get some Foley and stuff like that. Um, but I really wanted this to feel more natural than going hard on the audio. I didn't want it to feel like a commercial. So I didn't really up the sound design too much on this one. I kind of leaned more into the music for this film. So what I'm doing in this room is like, I have four windows in this room and they all have curtains on them, like blackout curtains. So what I was doing, like for this shot here, I pulled the blackout curtain down on the window that was closest to my face. That way I could give a little bit of shape, but I left all the other ones open and then I just exposed for the window. So you can kind of just follow this formula every time. So here, yeah, I just, I didn't black anything out, use negative fill or anything. All I did was take the curtain that's on the camera side right now and I pulled it down, leaving all the other ones open, which gives me just a little bit of shape. This is kind of where I start even when I'm shooting a commercial with a budget. Um, I still start like that, right? I'm like, I find the light source that I want to use as motivation. Um, I expose for that. And then I start taking black and trying to remove light from the rest of the image. Uh, VR boxing, highly recommend it. I use the Supernatural app to do my workouts in VR. Um, and it's a great way of doing like a really high intense workout and not have to leave your house. And you're learning boxing at the same time. I know some boxing moves now, so uh, definitely recommend. 
So for this, I believe I did lower the curtain and then I might have actually put up negative fill on this one. Um, this one has lots of shape. Um, I'm on the 40 millimeter speed boosted for sure on this one to kind of give that more wide angle effect. And I shot kind of down into the floor to give just more depth because if you're shooting in a house with white walls like my house, um, it tends to get pretty flat, but doing it this way, shooting down a little bit, gives me a little texture in the background, gives me contrast and color because I'm using the wood floors and then, you know, some of the furniture in the living room. Not much going on here, soft light um, coming from the window, but I do believe I might have put up a little black card on the camera side just to give a little bit of shape. So this is the only shot I had help with. I had my wife actually use the autofocus functionality on, on the Komodo and I set up a a uh, starting point and an end point, and all I had to do was have her hit one button, and when I walked into frame, and so it would rack from me to the pizza dough automatically, which is a fun little feature. Um, you can basically program your autofocus points or your fo focus points, and so she was just able to go boop, and it would focus for me. So once we kind of got in here, I did do some different lighting. Um, I think for a lot of these shots, it's natural light, but once I kind of move across the counter, I did put up a Nanlite Forza 500 with a Fresnel attachment on the front of it. Um, and I put it through the window outside to give this really nice harsh sunlight because I kept waiting. I, I took a while to shoot this film. I kept waiting for the sun to come out and it was just raining a lot where I live. And so eventually I just had to commit and make my own sunlight. Um, but for this stuff to expose properly, I actually put a tube light on the camera side. I actually used fill light for the first time in a really long time because I wanted to compete with those windows and still be able to expose the dough. Um, so you can see here that uh, the exposure is really nice because I actually do have a tube light on left of frame for a lot of these shots. I probably have a tube light off to the right here to give a little bit of fill because when you're shooting with those black counters, that stuff's going to clip. Especially on the Komodo, it doesn't have Aerial Alexa dynamic range here. Um, still decent dynamic range, but it's could be it could have more. And so, in order to expose everything properly, because I'm shooting with white and black, right? I'm really pushing the camera at its limits here. Um, and so, I did have a tube light once again, adding a little bit of fill on camera side, um, just bouncing off the wall. You can see here that it's a little bit brighter. I do have that Forza 500 with the Fresnel outside this window now, um, adding a really nice, you know, kind of inspired by chef's table look. You just always put a nice hard light um, on your food and it just gives it a really nice look. Also what's happening and something to think about a little trick is that my windows are really dirty. It's been raining. There's, you know, so the window is dirty, which is actually diffusing it just a little bit more because with the Fresnel, I wanted to give it a spotlight like punch, but sometimes when you do that, it's too harsh. And so what's nice is it hits the window and diffuses out a little bit because there's dirt on the window. And yes, I did make all these pizzas by hand by myself while shooting. And there was flour and dough on my camera afterwards, which was very unfortunate. Really hard to do it outside. These pizzas take about 90 seconds to cook. Um, that's why this shot is a little bit wobbly because I threw it in there and I had to quickly turn it or it would burn. And I even did burn some of it. Um, so you can see there. And yes to all the Italians that are upset at me for putting the basil um, on first. I just thought the basil looked prettier for the shots. I do tend to usually put my basil on last when I make a real pizza, but for the sake of this video, I compromised. Outside, same thing. I've got the negative fill. I've got the floppy camera side here and I'm moving it in and out depending on where the shot is at. This one's at 2.8 probably, which is unfortunate because I didn't get perfectly in focus. The autofocus was struggling in that environment and so I did manual focus and I missed the focus. You can see here at 2.8 and I'm still both of my eyes are not in focus. So this is where you would probably want to shoot at like four if you're using a speed booster um, and on a 40 millimeter. Um, that's kind of like a good gauge when you're doing narrative is like, can I get both eyes in focus? Like that's kind of how I judge. So here I wish I could be able to see the monitor better. I would have probably gone down to F4, open up the ND filter a little bit. But once again, I've got that floppy right basically touching my face here. I eat the pizza and I realize that life isn't all about the outcomes, something that I've been thinking about a lot in life and not obsessing over outcomes and just trying to enjoy the now. Um, in the experiences that I'm doing. And I wanted to enjoy my pizza and not worry about that email. So it's a very quick breakdown of that 
fairly long um, short film. And so it's pretty difficult to film alone, but I think what I made here was pretty decent. And why I'm doing this is I'm practicing. You know, I just made my short film Flea and I did that with a fairly large crew and a lot, quite a bit of money. Um, but I'm attempting to now make a feature film over the next year at some point. And I think I wanna shoot it by myself. Not shoot it by myself, but I want to direct and DP this one. Just shoot on my Komodo with one or two lenses and try to keep it as simple as possible. I'm going to attempt to make independent films and distribute them myself and kind of experiment with doing that. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that stuff or you know, or, or activate the bell notification for my channel if you're interested in that stuff as well. I will obviously be documenting my whole process of going through this. I'm writing a future film right now. It's quite an endeavor, um, but hopefully I can have some of that done here soon and we can talk about it on the channel. But I wanted to kind of practice again shooting um, on a, in a very you know lo-fi way, like without a full on grip truck, just with a few lights. And I think my rule going into the future film will be like, if I can't get this shot done with three or four lights, probably three, then I'm doing something wrong. I need to move on. Um, I need just need to make it work with the three lights because when you are shooting on a low budget, sometimes you need to move quicker. You need to move a lot quicker actually. And um, I realized when shooting Flea that um, it was taking too long to do a lot of the stuff that we did. Um, the film does look really nice, um, but um, in the end, I want to try doing it the other direction um, and eventually, you know, coming back, getting more money and getting a full crew again. But I think it'll be fun to just shoot with the Komodo and do it that way. So this is kind of a little test um, at trying that out. This took about two days to shoot. Um, I think, you know, I could have done it in a day if the dough was able to be used that way. Not much to talk about with the editing. Um, edited it in DaVinci Resolve. I actually kept shortening scenes, shortening scenes, and shortening scenes. But when you're the DP and you shoot stuff, it's just a crutch that happens. You, you, it's just the thing that happens. You tend to want to keep in your shots, right? You want to look at them longer, and that's a mistake. When you're editing, you just need to get through it. Just tell the story the way that the story needs to be told. Um, did that, use music bed for the music as usual. If you um, want to get some great music for yourself, you can uh, click the link in the description for some music bed music. But I was able to make this film and videos like this because of today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. You can start with one of their best-in-class templates or using Squarespace's next-generation web design system, Fluid Engine, you can customize every detail with the reimagined drag-and-drop technology for desktop or mobile. Or maybe you want to start an online store to sell your photography or other products. Squarespace has all the built-in functionality to get one of those up and running quickly. And I've actually been using Squarespace to run my online stores for almost a decade now. And of course, if you're like me, you're probably looking to build a portfolio, which Squarespace has a ton of features for that very thing. You can even create private galleries for client work using these tools. So if you're looking for a home for your work, well, you can just do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So if you have any questions about the film and how I made this, please uh, drop them in the comments below. And as always, until next time, guys, I'm Sensor Sakurai. See ya.